Welcome back to my spy reviews. In the last video I covered SDR calibration, so I thought I would try to tackle HDR, which turns out to be a bigger problem than you'd think. So I'm going to do my best to keep this as simple as I possibly can. First up, we have to talk about one of the biggest misconceptions people have, and that is that HDR is going to give you super vibrant colors. The truth is, more color doesn't mean more saturation. Most of the time, it's the exact opposite. Think about an apple on a TV screen. It shouldn't look bright neon. When you turn on HDR, HDR should remove that neon look so you can see all the little details because now you have more color volume. HDR restores the original color of the image rather than limiting it, making it more lifelike. Now for the first hardware problem. I'm currently on a HDR 400 monitor without any local dimming. If you push an LCD or LED monitor to its max limits all the time, you can get image retention. It isn't burn-in, turning off the TV and letting it cool down does make it go away, but I still don't want to risk it. So this goes against all of the advice you're going to hear. I think you should set your backlight to about 30 or 40% of its max strength if you don't have local dimming. I know this isn't technically correct for HDR, but without that local dimming, Paper white is boosted way above its correct level anyways, and it is better to do this than to ruin your display. Or you could just stick to SDR, which usually looks better on these types of screens anyways. Now here's another annoying bug that is apparently present on more than just Samsung TVs. If you watch HDR content in a smart TV app, it can sometimes break your tone mapping. It can get stuck mapping to something crazy like 10,000 nits. When you go back to your console, everything will look incredibly dim and gray. The easy way to fix this without resetting your TV is to open the YouTube app on your console and find a HDR video. If you're on Xbox, just open the calibration app. This forces the TV to reset itself back to normal. Now, speaking of Xbox, here's a trick. When you are in the calibration app menu, hit all four shoulder buttons at the same time. It will pop up the net value of the pattern in the corner. This gives you the numbers you need to set your games to. And since most games don't use the console system level calibration, this is the best way you can use it to adjust for in-game settings. The only real problem is that Xbox uses a safe zone average, whereas my patterns show the raw limit, so you might see a bit more on mine. Also, tone mapping should just be one to one. If you have a thousand nit TV, the game should ask for a thousand nits. It shouldn't be tone mapping to something like 4,000 and throwing that back into a small container. If you have HDIG, use it. It stops that bad tone mapping and gives you a native signal. All right, so let's get to the patterns. First one is the black level pattern. This checks if your TV or console is using limited or full range. If it's limited, you should only see the 70 bar. If it's full, you see both. If you see both, set the lower pattern to barely visible. If you can only see 70, make it the barely visible bar. Now for peak brightness. Technically, you shouldn't touch the contrast in HDR because it does mess up the tone curve. This leaves you with a bit of a problem. How do you adjust it? When almost every single game has you adjust a slider for it to be correct. And that's where the Xbox trick comes in with the pattern for it and where these patterns come in. You have to find where your TV stops showing the detail. All of the patterns here used to see your tone map limit are in a 10% window because if you use a full screen pattern on an OLED TV, it will automatically dim itself to protect it and give you a wrong reading. And these patterns work perfectly for just normal LCD and LED TVs. So in these patterns, wherever the bar stops, that is your hardware's limit. Use that number for your max net setting. If you don't see the pattern in the next slide, drop it back down to the previous value from the pattern before. Now for paper white. The standard has shifted from 100 to roughly around 200, so always set paper white to 200 nits in game. So as you can see, HDR is a complicated mess. It's a TV manufacturer problem for the most part. Just for reference, my Samsung TV has a max brightness of 400 nits, but it tries to tone map to 1000, and dynamic mode tries to push it to 10,000 on a 400 nit display. That is impossible. It is going to be overly dim and it will never look right. And just a heads up, I am working on a pattern with more values for a full screen mode for LCD users. I'm gonna put that in an unlisted video in a calibration playlist soon. So keep an eye out for that one. 
In the Discord, I'm gonna drop a file that's gonna contain a list of TVs and monitors that have HDIG, and it's gonna have some TV and monitor actual real net values. So that can help you out as well. Thanks for watching. Would you kindly leave a like and subscribe? And if you have any questions, just ask them in the comments and I will talk to y'all later.